What's up my producer friends, it's David with anothermonsterproductions.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to mix in mono using FL Studio 20. It's a very simple thing to do, but then we're gonna talk a little bit about maybe some reasons why you would wanna do this. And then hopefully I'll answer any questions you guys may have about this subject in the process. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, uh, when I'm inside FL Studio, if I go to my mixer, all I have to do to listen to something in mono is drag this little stereo separation knob or button that you see here and we're just going to drag it all the way to the right so let's take a listen to what this actually sounds like Now, if I drag it all the way to the left, it's actually going to do the opposite. It's gonna make things sound even wider. And whenever it's in the center, that means that it's the original. And this is what you always are going to wanna to make sure that your master channel is always set to the center whenever you bounce it down, uh, your final mix down. If you're using older versions of FL Studio, this stereo separation knob still exists. Um, you may have to open up the mixer a little bit in order for it to pop up and it may be down here somewhere, but it's definitely on the mixer. And if you're having any troubles trying to figure out what specific knobs do, all you have to do is kind of hover over it and it'll tell you up here what exactly the knob is. Now, you can add this on any one of these individual mixer tracks that you want. So if you have a specific instrument or synth that you want to put in mono for some reason, or if you want to make it even sound wider than it is, uh, then you can use these knobs here for that specific instrument. But this is how you would do it on the master channel. So mixing in mono can actually be a nice little trick to help you ensure that your mixes are not going to collapse and fall apart when we listen to them in other places, like for example, in the car or you know on your stereo system in the living room uh, or whatever the case may be because if you think about it if we have our studio set up properly and we've measured the distance from the wall to our speakers and made sure that they're the same distance from both places and we have uh, our speakers set up in a way so that they measure the same distance from each tweeter and then back to our ears and they're making a perfect triangle and we basically have our listening position in the proper place if you think about it this is really the only time we're actually going to be listening to music with that proper stereo image and hearing everything the way that it should be. And of course we need this in order to make well-educated mixing decisions, but when we're actually listening to music, whether it be you know in the living room, uh, chances are we're not sitting in an optimal listening position. So we're kind of getting an effect of the mix potentially collapsing a little bit back into mono anyway. Uh, same thing if we're sitting in a car, you know, we're going to be off center from the listening position. So we're never really truly in a perfect listening position to get that full stereo image anyway. So more often than not, we're actually listening to a mix that is somewhat collapsing to mono to a certain extent. So this is of course one reason why we want to make sure that our mixes sound good and mono but even more than that uh, there are still certain systems out there where our mixes are actually getting played in mono and this can be the case for a lot of phones and even some club systems out there now personally i am a big fan of really wide full sounding mixes and so the key with this is to try and find a balance of making sure that your mixes are sounding as wide and as full and big and huge as possible but also making sure that they sound good when you are listening back to them in mono so it can definitely be a little bit of a balancing act but it's always a good idea to check stuff in mono and especially when you're into making these wide mixes if you're working pretty much all in the box like i am chances are you're using some of these stereo shaping plugins like dimension expanders uh, various other plugins so for example i use the fruity stereo shaper a lot i also use this plugin by x for records which is called dimension expander and then isotope actually has a plugin which is called ozone imager and the good thing about ozone imager is it does give us a vector scope which gives us a visual of what the stereo image actually looks like and then we also have a correlation meter over here which shows us whether or not things are actually in phase. And so this is another reason why we wanna be checking our mix in mono, just to make sure that things are not super out of phase and super messed up. So these types of stereo plugins can really have a, a negative effect on the phase, depending on if you overdo it or not. And I mean, even if you're recording something in stereo, you can run into phase issues, which you just wanna be aware of. Now, Span also has a correlation meter, and basically the way a correlation meter works, we wanna just observe what's happening with this pretty much as long as everything is staying 
in the positives over on this side, then you're going to be good. Um, you shouldn't have to worry about changing things too much. Sometimes things will even dip down into the negatives for like a second. Even in that case, I wouldn't necessarily worry about it too much. Now, if things are staying in this negative region down here, that's when you really have some phase issues and it's going to be really problematic. And that's when you definitely are going to want to figure out how to solve those types of issues. Now, just like with all meters, it's a good idea to rely on your ears as well as the meters, which is why I'm telling you it might be a good idea to check your mixes in mono to begin with. And I think there's an argument to be made for actually mixing in mono and getting your mix to sound really good in mono and then going back to stereo. And chances are, if it sounds good in mono, it's going to sound really good in stereo as well. So I hope that I've covered everything and that all your questions about this subject have been answered if you had any. If not, feel free to ask me a question in the comments down below and I'll be doing my best to answer any questions that you may have. If you like the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I generally do a lot of FL Studio related tutorials and a lot of sound design type stuff as well. So if you're into that kind of thing, subscribe and I will see you in the next video.